Okay, today we're going to introduce the topic of exponents. And to begin with, we're going to talk about uh, the vocabulary word, three vocabulary words. First word, power. A uh, power is, uh, is a number written in exponential form, such as, for instance, the number, let's say, 7 to the fourth. And that is called a power. Uh, if I'm talking about numbers like that have the exponent of 2 and like that we would call it 6 squared or 6 to the second power so when it, it's a little 2 is the exponent we call it squared if it was uh, 3 for instance if I had say 6 with a little 3 on it we call that 6 cubed and uh, or we just six to the third power same thing just so you know that if you hear the word squared or cubed you know we're talking about an exponent of two or three which brings us to the word exponent the next vocabulary word and uh, this is a uh, the raised number used in a power to show the number of repeated multiplications of the base in other words in n and four squared the exponent is the number two with the little number that's on the top right hand of the base Okay, which we call the base, which is the next vocabulary words. The number used as a factor for repeated multiplication. In other words, in 6 to the third, the base is the 6. So just a quick review on what we're talking about as far as vocabulary goes. Let's bring it down here. I have a little example here. 3 to the fourth power. So what happens here, what we're talking about here, the 3 is the base, the 4 is the exponent okay and lastly this whole thing the base and the exponent together is called the power okay so that's just a little bit of a vocabulary lesson to begin with to make sure we understand what we're talking about uh, let's do some examples here we're going to do some examples first of all it says write in expanded form and this, another word of saying this is repeated multiplication. So in other words, the first one we do here is, well, we got the base of three. Now the exponent tells us how many threes there are. So how many threes? There's three threes multiplied together, and that's writing three cubed in expanded form. If I wanted the same thing with B, how do I write this in expanded form? Well, First of all, there's letters here, but it's the same, works the same way. There's x is the base. How many x's are there? There's four. Because that little exponent tells us there's four x's multiplied together. And what about the a? That's multiplied by an a, but how many a's? Two a's, because the little exponent on the a is a two, and there's two, it tells us there's two a's multiplied together. So if we knew what the number for x was and the number for a was, I could actually calculate the answer. Okay, so let's just um, let's back a little bit. Okay, negative 4 squared. Uh, I'm going to throw something in here. This one here, the 2, the squared here, this is a little bit tricky. We'll talk about this more in a few minutes, but the, the 2 here is actually on, okay, only on the 4. It's not on the negative sign. No, I'm going to put an X there. It's not the negative sign. It is a little check mark there on the 4. So what that means is the negative I can write as a negative 1. I can represent the negative sign with negative 1 times, and there's two 4s. That's what that means. Negative 1 times 4 times 4. And now I'll just put one quick example below that. If I were to do this, okay, that, that squared is on the whole bracket, okay, Therefore, this is negative 4 times negative 4, which is different than the one above. In this case, there's two negative signs because the squared is on the negative and the 4. We'll refer more to, we'll talk more about this in a few minutes here, but let's just finish this little section here about an expanded form. That's the important part of this. Okay, so the next uh, question here, I can write this as 4 times how many a's? 2 a's. That's so what the exponent tells us. And there's how many b's? Three b's. Okay. And um, now I just wrote that in expanded form. I could actually write the 4 in expanded form if I wanted to because 4 is just 
2 times 2. And if I want it to be uh, be real thorough, I could write it like that. And that would be factor completely into the numbers that multiply to give us 4a squared b cubed. OK, moving on. That's the first one. First thing we need to know is standard form. OK, the next thing we need to learn, we need to learn is, um, is about so expanded form now standard form. This means evaluate, or another word for evaluate is calculate the answer. So evaluate means calculate everything we can. If there's letters there, we can't evaluate that necessarily. If we don't know what the letters are, what numbers represent those numbers, but we can calculate the number part. So the first one, I would just what I would do is write it out the expanded way first. Expanded repeat multiplication, and then the answer is going to be 3 times 3 is 9. The answer is not 6. The 2 tells us how many 3's are multiplied together. It doesn't multiply the 3. Okay. Next one, what does 4 cubed, or 4 to the third power mean? It means this, 4 times 4 times 4. Well, what is the answer to that question? Well, the answer to that question is the following. 4 times 4 is 16. And then I have to also multiply that by the last 4. 16 times 4 is 64. There's the answer to that question there. OK. So uh, it's not, the answer is not 12. It's 4 times 4 times 4, which is 64. Uh, one last little question here. 6 to the 1. Well, what does that tell us? That tells us there's only 1 6 multiplied. Therefore, it's just the answer is 6. So any particular number, if I had the number 24, 24 to the 1 is equal to 24. It's the same thing. Normally speaking, I don't put the 1 in there because I assume if there's the number 24, that there is one 24 there. If there's more than that, I'd put a 2 or a 3 or whatever, how many there are. OK, so uh, that's standard form. Just calculate, multiply them together, any numbers. Which brings us to the third and last form, and that's the exponential form. In this case, we're going to write it as a power. So the base here is 3. There's 3, 3, and there's 3, threes. So we count them up 1, 2, 3. The exponent then is 3 as well. So 3 to the third is the exponential form of 3 times 3 times 3. The next one, if I have 4x's there, well, the base is what? The base, what's being multiplied together? Well, x is. That's the base. How many of them are there? 1, 2, 3, 4. So the exponent is 4. Four. Pretty straightforward. It's a matter of just counting them up and uh, shouldn't be any big problem, I hope. The next one then is negative 2. It's only one number there to multiply. Uh, how many x's are there? There are three x's. And there's a's. So a's the base, and there's two of them. And that is our final answer. So just to uh, kind of recap, let's do all three of these things. Let's, uh, we've got a little table kind of thing here we've set up. Five cubed, okay, 5 to the third power, write that in expanded form, so that's going to equal 5 times 5 times 5. There's three fives multiplied together. Standard form means multiply that together. So I'm going to multiply 5 times 5 and get 25. Okay, so this becomes 25 when I multiply it together, and then multiply it by 5 again, and it gives me 125 as the standard form. Okay, uh, let's do this again with the next example. Uh, we'll take 4 times 4 times 4. Write it in exponential form. Well, that's just, just how 4 is the base, and there's 3 of them. So those are equal. And that's equal to 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 again is 64. I think we did that example on the other page, our previous example. That's the answer. Uh, last one here, this is a bit tricky. Let's look at this a little bit more carefully. If I have this one here, I want to multiply this in expanded form. Well, how do I get this in expanded form? I have to break it down into the numbers that multiply to give us 32. In other words, I have to factor it. So I'm going to make a factor tree. What times what gives me 32? Well, any two numbers will work that multiply to give me that. So I'm just going to do, say, well, how about 4 times 8? That gives me 32. Neither of those are prime, so I can break them down farther. Four, what, four time, what times what is 2 times 2 gives me 4. That's nice. Those are both primes. 
So I'm going to stop right there. I'll circle them to show that they're primes. And I'm going to stop there. I can't break them down any farther. They're prime numbers. Nothing, mul nothing else will break down from there. And 8 is 2 times 4. Well, again, 2 is prime. And 4, once again, multiplies. 2 times 2 multiplies to give us 4. And so what have I got left as the prime factors? 32 equals 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 twos there. Count the number of twos that are circled. There's 5 twos. When they multiply, if I multiply that out, it gives me 32. So what I write that as an, exp an exponential form? Well, 2 is the base. And how many of them? There's 5 of them. So 2 to the 5th is exponential form. And I hope that helps kind of clarify things and put things together. Which brings us to the last point. This last part is positive and negative uh, bases. And this is the, we started on the other page. I mentioned one example there. And this is where it can get a little bit tricky. So let's just pay attention here. Uh, 2 cubed, well, that's pretty straightforward. That's just 2 times 2 times 2, which is just 8, not 6, right? 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. Uh, this one here is, remember this one from the other page? It was a negative 1 times 3 times 3, which is 3 times 3 is 9. Negative 1 times 9 is negative 9. So uh, that's the answer to that one. It's the answer to that one. Let's uh, go from there. Okay, the next one. Well, this one what? There's this four of these brackets multiplied together. And so if I just first of all do 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, if I just multiply, forget about the negative signs, just multiply 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, it's going to give me 16. Now, let's talk about the negative signs. There's, there's how many of them are? There's four. So what happens is these two negatives multiply together to give us a plus. These two, because negative times negative is a positive, we know that, make a positive. And then a positive times a positive gives me positive. So this answer is just positive 16. That's my answer. The negatives cancel each other out because there's an even number of them. If there's an odd number of negatives, then it's going to be an extra negative sign, which will make it negative. Next example, we're going to have negative 1 times, times what? 2, 2, 2, 2. There's four twos multiplied together. This is very similar to C, the example before, except this is not in a bracket. The, the 4 is only on the 2. Okay? So what happens is I get negative 16 is the answer. Because I have 2 times 2 times 2, 2 is 16. I have negative 1 is negative 16. And we're done. Okay? Uh, let's try the next one here. Again, negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. We know that. And how many negatives are there? There's three negatives. So because it's an odd number, it's going to be a negative answer. Negative answer. So the two negatives become a positive, and there's one extra negative to make it negative. Which brings us to the last two examples. These examples are a little bit trickier, um, for sure. But let's just look at this. What does this mean? This means negative 1 times negative 3. And how many brackets are multiplied together? Well, there's four of them. That's what it says there. So I'm just going to write them out. So what I know is, is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is actually going to be 81. If I do that in a calculator, I get 81. Or just do it in our heads. Um, uh, but what about how many negatives are there? Well, count them up. There's one, two, three, four, five negatives. So that's an odd number. Therefore, it will be a negative. 81 is the answer. In other words, there's four negatives in the question here, plus one more in front, which gives us five. Okay. What about the next, the last question? Just to finish this off. Uh, Let's uh, look at this one here. Well, two cubed. I can just get, I'm going to forget about the negative signs. Okay, just just do the numbers. Two cubed is eight. Two times two times two is eight. Times three times three is three squared is nine. 
Well, that gives me 72. What about the negative signs? Well, there's two negatives there, because it's squared. There's three negatives there, and there's one more in front. That adds up to six. There are six negative signs. Six negatives. Well, that's an even number. Therefore, they'll all cancel each other out in pairs, three pairs, and it will give us a positive 72 as a final answer. And I hope that that is a good beginning to understand exponents before we tackle the topic of the uh, exponent laws.